Hello everyone, this is Jimmy. I'd like to give you a whirlwind tour of Quicker, a free piece of software that I developed over the last three years while doing my PhD at the Computer Laboratory at the University of Cambridge. I needed more than just a reference manager that was available out there. I needed a research manager that would guide me through my PDF reading over the course of my PhD. Basically, something that would help me understand each PDF I was reading by placing it and its citations in context relative to all the other PDFs in my library, and one that would guide me in deciding which PDF to read next out of the hundreds of unread PDFs I kept discovering as I went along. I found Quicker immensely useful for exploring my own library of PDFs, and I hope you will too. Quicker is free software. You can download it from quicker.com. Add all your PDFs to Quicker and follow the five easy steps I'll show you in this video, and hopefully you'll have as much fun exploring your PDF library as I have had exploring mine and building Quicker. So let's get started. Right, so the first thing we need to do is open Quicker, download it, open it, and press the guest library. So it just we'll use Quicker as a guest for this example. And once you're in, tick the terms and conditions, and you're ready to roll. This is a Quicker start page. We're going to use the local guest library, so click that to open it. And now we want to add a whole lot of PDFs to this library, so we click this button up here and add a folder. I have a folder stored on my desktop full of PDFs, and that's this one over here. Browse to it on your computer. Hit OK, and start the import. You'll see Quicker is now importing documents into your library. I've got 660 to go, so this is going to take a while. I'm going to skip forward to it. But as it's importing, you'll see them starting to appear here every 100 or so documents. All right, let's skip ahead. So here we are. Quicker is almost done importing all 660 documents. It then needs to go through a bit of a process after that to basically analyze all the documents, look at the first page of them to try and work out what the title is of those documents. If any of your documents are scanned, it's then going to try and extract uh, the text from the, from the actual pictures using OCR. And then it's going to index those documents so you can use the search features very well. All right, let's just wait a few seconds. It should kick off. Here we go. So you can see Quicker is starting to suggest metadata for our titles. And if I go to the bottom of my library, you'll see it's already started coming up with what it thinks are the titles of each of these documents. Once we have all the titles, we're going to then fire up the BibTeX sniffer, which will then help us quickly find the BibTeX information. That BibTeX information is like the title, the author, the journal, the year of publication. And we're going to use the internet to do that quickly and accurately but we're going to need the titles to make our lives easy. So let's let Quicker finish all that, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now that you have a whole lot of PDFs inside your Quicker library, we want to find the associated BibTeX data for these PDFs. This BibTeX data is useful not only for writing up papers, it'll automatically format your bibliography and your citations in Microsoft Word or in BibTeX or LaTeX, but also it's useful for finding the cross-references between your papers, and that's what we want here. First thing we do is press this BibTeX sniffer button to fire up the sniffer. The BibTeX sniffer is simply a screen with the current PDF for which you're looking for the BibTeX information up here in the top left. Over here is where the BibTeX will end up to be associated with this PDF, and down here is a web browser to search for the BibTeX. So all you do is you select the title, click or then search for that in Google Scholar, that title, whatever you've selected up here. Here we can see is the wrong one so perhaps we want to go hunting for it or maybe we want to include Whitbrock's actual name there you can see we've now found the correct one we hit the import into BibTeX button quicker then we'll search for the surname highlight the surname on the PDF and so you know this is the correct paper once you're happy with it hit next again you see import in the BibTeX we see the highlighted authors it's the correct one next so you can see how easy it is to associate BibTeX with each of your documents. If the monotony of going around in circles is getting you down, turn on the Quicker Wizard, the BibTeX Sniffer Wizard. Now what happens is Quicker will automatically do the circle of search for the title, check BibTeX, check the authors exist, and if it finds they do exist, it'll move on to the next one automatically. So let's give it a go. Hit Next, and there you can see Quicker jump through two papers before getting stuck. Well, 
here the reason is it probably hasn't found Beza Man on this front page and you can see it hasn't so it got stuck but we know this is a physics physicist reading physics paper by Bezerman. we happy it's correct so we hit next and there's quicker running through a few more okay again here quicker wasn't able to find the title on this paper so we just need to select it and quicker gets happy again and off it runs Again, here it has stopped because Zainane's name, however you pronounce it, has a funny symbol there and the BibTech has a escape sequence. So Quicker just wants to be sure. Are we happy with it? Hit next. And then you can see Quicker runs through. Okay, this is an example where it's not a journal paper. It's something that I did during my university time. So I'm going to hit skip this paper. Yes. And Quicker moves on. That's how easy it is to find hundreds and hundreds of BibTech records for each of your PDFs in record time. Happy hunting for your BibTech. So generating the cross-references is as simple as pressing this button and then waiting. It could take quite a while. Um, on my library of 600 papers, this takes about 20 minutes. But you can see down here, this, this one will fill, the green line will fill here as it tells you how many it's found. And this shows you the current document it's searching through. Let's zoom back in once this is done. So here we are at the tail end of quicker finding all the citations in my library. You can see them in action already. Let me open one of the one of the PDFs. What you'll see over here is down the left hand side it not only shows you what else these authors wrote, but also any of the papers in your library that this paper has cited and potentially if uh, it's been cited by anything they listed here. So you can still be working with quicker even while these citations are being found. So while that's working, I'm going to now find the auto tags. What auto tags are are a way of tagging your papers, but quicker tags the papers for you. It comes up with the names of the tags and it tags it for you. So you choose the auto tag tab here, and because I've never run it, it just tells me about that. And I just hit refresh there, and you'll see here's quicker. It's created. It's found a whole lot of acronyms. It finds uh, technical terms that are common across your. Uh, that are coming across your library and here you can see all the tags that's come up with quite a few tags there. So the last thing we need to do is generate our uh, themes and that's really straightforward. I'll show that now. So now that we've generated all the auto tags in our library, the last thing we need to do is generate the themes. To do that, open up Expedition, choose which library you want to do it. We're going to use our guest library, choose how many themes you want, Quicker will suggest a, a number and hit the refresh Expedition button. Quicker will go scanning through your documents uh, finding all the technical terms in those documents with which it will come up with themes. Occasionally you will want to come back if you've added a lot of PDFs to your library since the last time you ran this. You'll not only want to refresh the auto tags, but you'll then also want to refresh the expedition so that your themes are nice and up to date relative to all the new papers that you've added to your library. So because it's the first time I've run it, the screen's pretty much empty, but you'll see as soon as the themes are built for the first time, down the left hand side here, let me collapse them all. These are all the themes that Quick has found in my library. You can see, for example, I use conditional random fields a lot. Well, what are the important papers about conditional random fields? Well, here's a big one. Well, it's actually the seminal paper about conditional random fields. You can see it has to do with conditional random fields, text segmentation, and matrix uh, factorization can uh, quite commonly occur with conditional random fields. Um, if we go back to the guest library, you'll see these were originally blank. Now that we've generated the themes, if I scroll, they're now color-coded according to the themes to which they belong. So this one's quite a bit in the green and pink theme. If we open it up, you'll be able to see what the green and pink themes are. Page rank and research paper. So this is research paper recommended system, and it probably uses page rank to do it. So that's the themes setting in quicker. Having generated the themes for our quicker library, let's explore them in a brainstorm. Right click any paper, explore and brainstorm, click on the node and you can see all the things you can do with this node. You can expand the annotations you've made, you can expand the authors, you can expand the expedition themes. Maybe for this paper we want to see what the most similar papers are. Maybe for this paper we want to see who cited it. For this paper we want to see who the authors of that paper are. That's VRL. And what else did they write? Well, they wrote these two papers, so it's going to pull those two papers together. Alternatively, maybe we want to see in this document what were the most prevalent themes in the document. Hit the M key. There you can see the pink themes that show up here. Now, when you're looking at a theme, you can either see which are the most 
uh, relevant, uh, the most similar papers to a theme, or you can find out which are the most influential papers for a theme. If we look at the similar papers, you'll see they're all in this pink theme. So if you want to read a theme more deeply, well, you're going to go through these papers one by one. But more importantly, if you're wanting to read a paper, you want to know which are the influential papers for a theme, you hit the D key. That not only brings up important papers in the theme, but it also brings up important papers from other themes, but they've been cited a lot by papers in this theme. So you know that this theme and this paper is quite influential to other papers in this theme here. So that's exploring quicker themes in a brainstorm. Uh, you can spend hours just finding new facets of your library that you never would have believed existed. Enjoy yourselves. Ciao.